Matthew Waters, your supervising sound editor for the comedy mystery Only Murders in the Building, uh, but actually one of the standout episodes of the season, The Boy from 6B, uh, is conspicuous, of course, for the sound it lacks, which is to say dialogue. Um, what were your first thoughts when you learned the plan for that episode? Um, and and you know, what did you think uh, you'd have to think differently about it? Well, it was amazing. So uh, uh, Julie Monroe, the picture editor, uh, called me and said, hey, we have this episode. So I got the script and read it and was thoroughly intrigued. And um, and we uh, uh, so I said, well, let me start doing some some things now. And then they really didn't know how they wanted to go about it. Right. Like, how much do we hear? How much don't we hear? And all that. So Basically, I told them to uh, send me the production tracks, and um, and uh, then I started building these scenes and just kind of see, you know, it's always a process, right? It's not just paint by numbers on something like that. It's like, oh, how's this making me feel? It's almost like composing music to it, if you will. And uh, so, and then the key was to you know, we started going into a direction and then the John, the showrunner, he's like, I don't want to, I don't want to make sure we don't hear any of their words. Right. So then I had to manipulate the words because I still wanted that presence, you know, that I still wanted the scene to be attached to us as a uh, viewer, as a participant. And so I used the production track, but I manipulated the um, voices. I did two different versions and then ended up playing them together. And so you couldn't really tell what they were saying and, and, uh, but you knew that you were hearing that they were saying something that's, that. and then I built an ambience and a background and a kind of like the, uh, inside Theo's world ambience for it as well. And, and how did, uh, you create that ambient sound and, and decide what that would sound like? You know, at first, you know, you kind of just, uh, I just took my ears and covered them. <laughs> you know and uh and then i just remember you know my dad actually uh taught uh taught people how to teach the deaf and so i'd go to gallaudet college in washington dc and and uh i i was around um the deaf community and so you know i kind of remember things that they would tell me from those experiences and you know and then and then it's also about uh just trying to uh keep uh, the viewer engrossed you know just immersed if you will and uh and to be honest with you until we played back after until we mixed the episode and after we played it back i wasn't sure if we went too far if we, i didn't know and then i we watched back the episode and i found myself totally involved in the episode and so i was really happy with it in the end uh, did making a, an episode without any dialogue give you a different perspective on the way you use sound on the show and the way it functions, uh, you know, in a, a regular episode? Oh, for sure. Because, you know, I also had to, you know, there are moments when, uh, you know, the characters get angry or all of a sudden the characters are mysterious to the audience. Oh, what's going on there? And so without the dialogue, I had to come up with some sounds to make uh, all of a sudden it get more intense or it get more mysterious. And it had to be subtle and it had to be part of the ambience. And it actually took quite some time to figure that out so it wouldn't just lay flat you know that was always the concern when they started enjoying uh, uh the soundscape i was providing they wanted to keep it going longer and longer and longer and i didn't think that was going to be the case and so once they decided that it, they, it was going to be pretty much the entire show when we were with theo uh i had to um you know, I had to come up with those uh, moments to make it pop a little bit or, or make you make you feel. And uh, another good another good uh, thing was, you know, then taking the music, like when they're listening to the headphones with Theo and I took the music and I put it through the same processing that I put the dialogue through pretty much. I had to adapt it for the music and then, you know, then mix it in. So it all of a sudden uh, was part of that world. Yet you could still feel the, the music or you could still hear the music and, and all that when he's listening to the headphones and it gets louder. And it was it was challenging. But, man, just what a great experience. I mean, I, I couldn't have enjoyed it more, to be honest. 
now, in general, what goes into the sound design for a show that under normal circumstances is, is built around a lot of dialogue and conversation? Uh, what part of that do you play? Uh, so uh, like on this, on this particular episode, how was it different? Or uh, just, in general? just in general on the show? On the show, well, to, to me, the writing and the acting are mm, tremendous, right? And uh, Joe, uh, the production mixer does, oh my gosh, he does such a great job for us. So, you know, the way I go about it is really trying to make sure that the dialogue is, it saves the performances, is super clean and, uh, and, and keeps the emotion. And I really think that's the player. Like a lot of times when you, when I first read the script, I thought, oh, New York, maybe that's the play, you know, uh, that's the character. And it is kind of a character, but really those three characters, uh, the writing and the acting is so tremendous. They are the show and so i really try and make everything as clear as possible for the audience and still keep the subtleties of their performances so in this particular case i really really start with them and then i work around it and then whatever the story calls for or the ambience or how's how's the uh, uh scene feeling emotionally and are the jokes playing and, and and also the sincerity you know that's one thing i love about this show it's just so sincere it's beautiful so you know, you know, and uh, the show being set in New York City, which is uh, famously or infamously, depending on on how you need to work with it, uh, the city that never sleeps. Mm -hmm. um, how do you work with, uh, you know, just the natural sounds of the city? Uh, the natural sounds of the city. I just, uh, you know, again, it's it's just based on what's going on in a particular scene. You know, and what do I want? You know, sometimes a scene we get outside the Arconia and I want it to be super busy, super aggressive. And then sometimes I don't, you know, it all depends on the mood. I think that's one thing I've learned after doing this for 30 years that uh, just because when I walk outside New York, it's super noisy doesn't mean that it's good for that particular scene. And we have control over that. So let's embrace it. So a lot of times I'll have the layers that are there, but I'll play them back or send them in reverb a little bit. So, they, so you just feel them or sense them, but you're not bombarded by it, right? So you can still pay attention. You can still feel. And, and I mean, there are times when Marty, Steve, and Selena, they, they get very intimate. And, uh, and, uh, um, and yeah, I want to stay away from that. Let them shine. Uh, now, before Only Murders in the Building, you worked on a show that's probably the direct opposite of Only Murders in the Building, which is Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how vast are the differences uh, in terms of your work with the sound on on like an urban comedy like this versus an epic fantasy like that? Mm -hmm. No, that's a that's actually a really great question. And the, uh, for me, the answer, I think, is a little bit surprising probably to most is it's not as vastly different as as, as you think in the sense that pretty much even in only murder, you know, Game of Thrones was based on that world of reality, you know, so we didn't use a lot of, uh, you know, whooshes or, or rumbles to create um, uh, the tension or the feeling we had to use real world stuff. Sometimes the real world was a dragon, but we still had to use the real world stuff. Right. So similarly on this, it's, it's, um, you know, both these, uh, shows are very cinematic, very artful and just very well written and very well acted. And so, you know, sometimes, sometimes the best sound is to stay out of the way. And then, and then sometimes it's not, but so we get to pick and choose and, uh, and uh, and it's great working with uh, showrunners that um, that let you help them in that regard. You know, let the, the, the they trust you in in in, uh, in enhancing the experience as opposed to stepping on the experience. That's what I'll say. Uh, do you think the uh, sound quality on Only Murders would be significantly different if if, if this same material were like uh, approached as a drama? Ooh, that's a great question. Can you ask it one more time? It was too good. <laughs> yeah, I'm just wondering if like, you know, the quality of sound that you would make for a show like Only Murders would change if it were like, you know, the emotional tone were like drama instead of comedy. Um, you know, uh, I don't necessarily think so on this one because there's a lot of, I don't know if you'd call it drama, but there's just an inherent, a lot of um, emotion in uh in this show. I mean, you really, 
I'll speak for myself. I fall in love with these characters. I love them. I love watching them. And I love finding out about them. And I think on a drama, I have the same kind of a reaction. So I, I don't I don't think and we don't really go for silly and cartoony. You know, this this show isn't that it's very polished and professional. I really dig it. Uh, I'm well, very, very blessed to be a part of it, to be honest. Uh, well, uh, congratulations on your work on the show. Um, and uh, thank you so much for talking with us about oh, it. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. I could I could talk about it for hours, but I know you don't have that kind of time. So. <laughs>